It's that time again. It's time for another Saturday night special where we talk about everything rock hounding related. Well, there's a special project that I've kind of followed up with over the past, I think almost a year now, that I find very, very interesting. And I'd like to share it with you if uh, you haven't already seen this. Now, I feel like uh, a large number of you out there either have fond memories of playing with Legos as a kid or buying Legos for your kid. And I, there's a guy who is coming up with Lego sets that replicate minerals. And I think these are absolutely beautiful. They're relatively small. Um, and there's a thing called like Lego ideas. Now it's basically you put your self-made homemade kit on line and people vote for it. And once you hit 10,000 votes, well, Lego responds and they're like, yeah, we, we could make this or yeah, we're not going to make it, that type of thing. I think these kits this guy produced are amazing. And he's currently, I think, at 9,200 votes. Uh, he needs 10,000. We here, watching the Saturday Night Special, could send him over the 10K mark if you go sign up and uh, give a vote towards this project. I think this is really cool, and let me tell you why. How many kids do you think could get something like this, these kits, and, and it's like planting the seed of mineral collecting, rock counting, and interest in rocks and minerals. I mean, uh, this, the sets are beautiful, and I think it would be something that would be really cool to have out there to kind of like, you know, give us gifts, inspire people, get kids into what you see back here, you know, that type of thing. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, I thought it was kind of fun. Um, I like the guy's project. I like all of it. If you're interested, uh, go to the link down below and, and uh, send, send a vote, a vote his way, you know. Some of you may have seen this. Um, there is a new uh, trip report up on the website, currently rockhunting.com, where we went out to the Kettle Falls Bridge. Now this bridge goes over Lake Roosevelt, which is actually a reservoir. There's a historic mention of barrel crystals. <laughs> of course, it's underwater, uh, but it's it's fun. You know, it's a beautiful area. Uh, there's, yeah, that. Um, you technically can't take any rocks from Lake Roosevelt, which kind of irks me a little bit. Um, you know, although it is kind of a, it's just a reservoir, uh, technically it's part of the uh, NPS system, National Park System. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but go check it out. Check out that uh, trip report. So a couple of things. Um, somebody said to me a while ago, they were like, the Dugway geodes, the little ones, are better than the big ones. Well, I cut a bunch of little ones this past week, and uh, you be the judge for yourself. I think they're good, right? Like, they're definitely awesome looking. Like, you know, I think that's that's a very, a very beautiful little geode. Is it better than the big ones? I would say it's equal. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say it's equal. I mean, that's a cute little, that's a cute little geode, a little druzy pocket in there. Um, and, you know, they're, they're, they're little. I like. I like them. They're they're pretty. I still have more from that trip out there. Um, obviously, these aren't polished. I just gave them a cut. I would say at least so far, um, they are they're equal. Um, I still have I still have these guys that we can we can cut. Let me know if uh, if you've gone to the Dugway Geode Beds in Utah, like we did this past summer, and do you have what are your thoughts? Um, I mean, they all kind of all the ones that we got regardless of size seem really good i had i had one dud i guess i i would call that a dud i don't know it's just not as good as the other ones i guess so maybe not a dud really so much as just less <laughs> less good my buddy jason he sent me a couple of a uh, couple of thunder eggs this week for mcdermott so i hope to give these guys a cut in this coming week and maybe Next week on the Saturday Night Special, we can uh, give these a, a look-see. Uh, I wish I could 
Maybe I should learn how to juggle this summer. <laughs> Three thunder eggs in your hands. It, it calls for calls for juggling, I guess. Um, man, uh, heading up to Saddle Mountain. So going up to Saddle Mountain is awesome, especially this time of year. Uh, I thought the video came out really good. Um, two videos this past week going up to Saddle Mountain and cleaning the petrified wood. Well, the blue petrified wood, okay? This stuff is quite interesting. So I'm not 100% convinced that I'm going to cut it as opposed to keep it as specimens. Doing, uh, looking at it under these LED lights really does not do it justice. The outside photos, it looks gorgeous. Well, when I posted those videos, um, I got contacted now by six, <laughs> six different people that have said that they have found a single little piece of blue agatized petrified wood. And that's exactly what this is. Uh, when you put it under the microscope, it, you can see that it is just like a kind of betroidal agate. Um, in some areas on this one, it looks a little thin, uh, maybe like a little coat, a little bit of a coating. Uh, it looks deeper in some areas, especially when I'm looking at it under the microscope and shining a light into it. Uh, so it's not super uncommon, but uh, not common, right? Like, I mean, I've ta also talked to people that have never seen anything like this before. I've never seen anything like this before. So it's interesting that people are digging in many different locations up at Saddle Mountain, and maybe they find a singular little piece. So that's interesting because there's only, there's not like a deposit of it, it would seem. Um, I mean, I guess it was probably all in one place at one point and then scattered, scattered about. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to have a whole bunch of just kind of like standard, like brown limb casts and petrified wood that you'd probably kind of find any, anywhere up there and then throw one, one blue piece in the mix. So it wouldn't form in those conditions. And obviously, Saddle Mountain uh, what, what hasn't, wasn't always a mountain, right? Like, it got uplifted. So there's an uplift story happening. Um, interesting, though. I'm very happy with these. Uh, there are some very high-quality photos up on the website, along with a web-exclusive video. Go check it out if you have the, have the time and you're so inclined <laughs> the little tiny hammer, the little hammer that we got up there. Look, like I, I cleaned it up. I cannot stand uh, a dirty, rusty old hammer, but like this is like I didn't. I've never found an. I've never seen an S-wing hammer of this uh, this size. Like that's a, a, a little cutie hammer. Um, I don't know. It's it's always good to have an extra hammer around. You know, you're gonna like be. Uh, Going rock hounding with people, you can always give one to share. Uh, I also have been did a couple of micro mounts. Now, if you haven't been following along, I've been getting into the world of micro minerals. And the way you have micro minerals, I mean, you can't really put it on a shelf, right? Like, I mean, it just <laughs> it's gonna look look like a bunch of little flakes of things and little specks and. Uh, you know, they'll get damaged, they'll get lost. So, a little perfect little quartz crystal in there. Uh, and I put, a, I mount them in these boxes, and the idea behind mounting them in the boxes is it's protected and they're really nice for looking at under the microscope. Uh, my favorite piece here, the Ontonite um, that I mounted up, which is great. It's a local thing here for us, and uh, I love it. It's 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 great. Um, it's fun to be able to really uh, get away from like the shelf grade shelf sized specimens and really like like turn my focus into something very very small. I'm learning a lot about mineral identification in that process, which is really cool. And yeah, yeah, I don't know the the. The world of really big rocks and minerals is kind of small, actually, if you think about it. So the amount of 
let's say really high quality let's hmm, let's use this as an example the amount of beautiful quartz crystals of this size is kind of rare i mean they, they occur in abundance in very small areas in this world uh but you're not going into your backyard and finding this and then even uh more rare would be if this was flawless right like there wasn't a single chip out of it even more rare would be if it was uh like amethyst if there was like a penetration twin and all the other things that could happen well although that might be rare at that size um things get really really little they are often quite flawless and quite beautiful so uh yeah you know i've been thoroughly enjoying exploring that aspect of mineralogy it's a lot of fun for me and you know you get to spend time at the microscope which uh if if you're at all interested in getting a microscope oh man there's you can you can get into it quite affordably and have so much fun looking at cool cool minerals you know um I'm thinking about putting together a video in the coming weeks or so and kind of show the microscope setup, show all of the things, how I kind of use it, how I'm doing the image stacking. It's just kind of a complex video, and uh, but I think it'd be good. Like, if a couple of things, all right? A couple of things I regret. I regret not getting a microscope sooner. I wish I had gotten one, like, <laughs> years, years ago. Uh... I regret not getting a legitimate trim saw sooner. Like I have that high tech diamond trim saw, having a little trim saw for just like whacking things in half and getting away from the tile saw. I wish I had done that much, much sooner. So really those two things, because you can learn so much about different rocks and minerals and all kinds of stuff by simply giving them a cut Looking at them under the microscope, uh, the, it's just the the world seems uh, somewhat endless. I'm just grabbing random things now. <laughs> uh, this, as an example, like that looks that looks ugly, right? So this looks ugly. Now, obviously, you're not doing this on a trim saw, but like just to be able to cut this piece of river tumbled rhyolite and expose that seam in the back, uh, which I think would probably look good if I nipped the top of that off. Having something to be able to expose the internals of rocks, to be able to look at them in great depth and explore all the ins and outs of them. Those two things. Those two things. Well, I think we're going to leave this one here, everybody. Thank you for coming by, hanging out with me in the shop. Listen to me uh, <laughs> ramble on about different uh, rocks and mineral-related subjects. So, um... Yeah, y'all take care and I will catch you guys on the next video.